So this is an introduction to how I set up my charts, how my charting style goes, um, or really trading style. So for an example, let's go with uh, with Amazon. That's a chart I haven't done yet here for you guys. Okay, so the very first thing I do is I always start uh, by looking at a chart from high time frames. Um, so for stocks, or even for coins, I'll start at a super high time frame, maybe a one month chart to each candle. Um, so looking at Amazon, the very first thing that strikes out to me is this is a parabolic advance, um, which means that when something goes vertical like this, I'm going to be looking for uh, shorts more than longs, right? So then I'll be like, okay, this is this has had a really fast growth. Now it looks like it started to drop off. Um, so that's the high time frame look. Then I'll start going down. So let's look at the three day. Um, all right, we start to see some levels up here. Um, I see a level here. I see a level here. Here's a real strong one. Um, if we add something like VPVR, that's going to help visualize the levels on the side. Visible range. There we go. All right, and then I'll go down to the day. And for stocks, and even for crypto, the day is really where I sit at generally. Um, and from the day is where I like to start setting up my daily levels. Um, so I really like my horizontals first. That's the very first thing I do, horizontals, after I get a general feel for it. Um, and for horizontals, I want to look at where uh, there are significant places that the price interacts with. Um, so taking a look at this, uh, the first thing I notice is that there is um, this top area here. So I'll say this, this looks like the place where it was rejected. We see um, a double top here, but we'll get to that more in a second. Um, next level I see um, is this one. So what I see here is where the price has interacted with this level from below multiple times, and now it's interacted with it from above. So these aren't exactly just lines, uh, but they're but they're kind of these boxes, these areas, zones is what I really call them. So I see that it's interacted with it from below here, it went down and interacted again here, it broke through it and it interacted from above. So this is what I'd call a SR flip or a support resistance flip, where this zone acted as resistance, resistance, and now it's acting as support. Price went up, came back down, interacted with the zone again as support, broke through, and now is meeting it as resistance. Um, and so now that it's you see this flip here, I'm actually expecting this to drop further because um, it was support, now resistance. All right, and then I see. Um, there's kind of another zone here, so I'll just draw that in. And what you'll notice is as I draw these zones, is that this VPVR really helps me. You can see that these zones that I'm in tend to be right uh, on the edges of these gaps that you'll see here, where there's this negative space. Um, those are called low volume nodes, um, but that's more advanced. We don't need to talk about those. Um, but I'm so once I get my, my horizontal levels in, and then there's this significant horizontal level down here, uh, where we can see lots of interaction here. Um, so then what I do is I look for patterns, right? So one of the things that's very useful is to become very familiar with chart patterns. Um, and once you practice and you understand them, the most important thing is to really have strict definitions of what those patterns are. Uh, and what makes them uh, meet criteria or not meet criteria. And then you can use them to help define your risk and reward, uh, the likelihood of that pattern meeting its target. So what I'm just here is say a pattern that you might call a double top. Um, this looks kind of like a bear flag to me. Um, so if we stretch it out a little bit, we'd see something that looks like this with the flagpole here. So a bear flag 
and then I'd expect it to drop down kind of like this. And I'd expect it to drop down to this next level because we see that this level's uh, flipped from support to now resistance and it'll probably drop down to the next support. Um, that also is what I like to call a confluence as confluence with uh, the measure rule. So with this pattern, a bear flag pattern, so a flag on a long pole, we measure the distance of the pole from the end of the flag, expect it to drop back down here. So we'll see what happens Monday. But this actually looks like a pretty good risk reward uh, short entry right now. Um, so that's generally how I, I trade, how I set up my trades is I look at horizontal levels and then I look at patterns uh, within those levels. Um, that's my bread and butter. I also use oscillators occasionally to look for divergences to see uh, if it's likely that a pattern will break in the direction that I'm expecting. Um, and there's, there's a lot more complicated things, but really at the end of the day, um, I use support and resistance and trade patterns.